Well, thanks, Shaq. Uh, currencies, uh, stocks and bonds plunge across Africa and other places after Britain's vote to leave the European Union triggered a slump in oil and other commodities and sent investors scrambling for safe assets. Britain is one of the largest foreign investors in Kenya. For example, the British government says that bilateral trade with the East African country totals more than $1.7 billion. Well, this leads us to our question of the week, which asks, what impact will Brexit have on Africa? Mixed reactions uh, from our viewers and listeners. Uh, but before we begin, let's remind you that we are tweeting live today. Just use the hashtag VOA Africa Brexit. And if you haven't yet, do follow us at VOA Shaka. Speaking of it, let's go to a tweet uh, from Emmanuel Kachele in Tanzania, who tweets that Brexit will impact Africa like the change of trade contracts and policies with the UK and EU and the fall of markets. Let's look at another tweet while we're at it. This time it's uh, Martin uh, Nyalusi, uh, still from Tanzania, who says, I think Brexit will affect the market of raw materials like flowers and decreasing grants for Africa. Well, now to a comment uh, from uh, one of our Facebook followers. Uh, this time it's uh, Victor Chabinga from Zambia who writes, the lesson for us Africans is that we should not overly depend on the world outside of Africa. They equally have their own problems to deal with. I cannot envision any fundamental impact of Brexit on me in Zambia. That's what he writes. Well, Shaka and Guess, uh, that's certainly an interesting take on uh, le Brexit, as the French have been calling it. Your take. Very interesting indeed. Uh, Frank, is it, uh, French, it could probably, France could be the next country, perhaps, uh, if know. in fact the right <laughs> wing of the society has its way, correct? People are afraid of a contagion effect throughout Europe, you know, not just France, but uh, Netherlands and uh, countries that have expressed Sweden, Denmark. Well, yes, they have Austria. Uh, exactly. Those who have expressed some worry about the European Union for some time and have these kind of fringe parties that have gained more and more popular acceptance. So I do think that there is a possibility for uh, additional referendums. Uh, on the mainland of Europe, and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, the, I think the, the issue of the day is the question of how much can this be contained and how can the negotiations between the EU and the UK uh, evolve so that it contains the issue to just the UK. But what do they fear, really? Is it just immigration? In the UK or in the, uh, in the, in the UK other countries? And uh, the other countries, for that matter. Is I think it's a concern about uh, dislocation, the economic dislocation that a lot of the uh, lower classes are experiencing. And part of that is a result of globalization that's taken place over the last 25 to 30 years. And there's not been the right mechanisms to reintegrate these people of uh, different manufacturing jobs, for example, uh, into the economy that's more of a knowledge-based economy. So it really is uh, an issue about managing economic dislocation and not letting that spill over into a fear, an irrational fear of Im immigrants. And there is, of course, uh, an apparent disconnect between the elite and the ordinary folks. Clearly. And that's what we saw in the UK, and that's what we've seen in, in many other countries in Europe, and even our own here in the US. Mariaba, uh, any more reaction from the audience, please? Well, uh, speaking of that uh, fear uh, that other countries will follow suit, um, we've been hearing, obviously, you know, Nexit, uh, Sexit, uh, Frexit. So it's all over the social media, uh, I, sh I should say, the, the social uh, uh, media platform. So we'll have to just see where uh, this is going to take uh, Europe. Let's go to another comment, uh, this time from Machas uh, Gwandu from Tanzania, who writes, it looks like the people from Tanzania have been uh, definitely uh, writing to us a lot. He says... Uh, I believe uh, that Brexit will have more adverse effects on the UK than on Africa. We'll continue trading with Britain and with the EU. We will probably experience some hurdles in the area of immigration, but it might not take too long before things return to normal. One more posting this time from uh, Patricia Namdi uh, in Uganda who writes, 
the British withdrawal from the EU will lead to drastic changes. And evidence of this is the fact that uh, PM uh, David Cameron have announced uh, his resignation. This is a lesson for Africa, which has integrations like ECOWAS and the Africa Union, that integration should be people-centered. Brexit will have an impact on African politics and its economy. Development of African countries will be affected because the EU is Africa's most important donor. Markets will be affected and African economies may suffer. A lot to digest here, Shaka, and guess again your take on these comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Prince Wasaja, are you there? I'm here, Shaka. Your reaction, uh, especially in view of the fact that uh, you have a situation uh, with the East African community where you have voices uh, that uh, want to fast track what they characterize as the East African Federation. Yes, and uh, uh, this is the story. Uh, because the very uh, disease that has caused uh, the uh, death uh, of UK's relationship uh, with uh, the EU uh, is what is being replicated with African uh, dictators uh, as they forge these regional blocks. A case in point is uh, the East African uh, community uh, that has been very strongly and forcefully driven by uh, a dictator Museveni uh, of Uganda. How uh, can you call him a dictator when in fact he says he's being elected by his people? He's democratically elected. But this is a man who goes uh, into elections and uh, announces that whatever the will of the people, he's not going to hand over power. So how do you uh, characterize uh, such an evil uh, dictator? So the will of the people, as we saw it here in the UK, this wasn't a vote of confidence uh, or, or no confidence about Prime Minister David Cameron. But he respected the will of the people. And it wasn't a big, a huge margin. But you find uh, people like uh, Museveni competing with his uh, opponents uh, in an election and just declares that he cannot accept the outcome uh, of that election unless it's in his favor. But back to our point uh, of uh, the impact of these regional uh, blocks. They have been forging these relationships without involving the masses. If you traveled around the East African region, uh, I do uh, by the nature of my work, you find that people do not have any understanding about why this so-called East African community is being forged. And you hear, uh, Especially Museveni, I'm, I repeat this name because he has been, he's the longest uh, serving in the region. Uh, he took it as a personal project uh, to establish uh, what he calls uh, a federation of East Africa. He wants more uh, political integration, a political union, having one president in East Africa. That has got to be rejected by all the people in that region that this man uh, doesn't mean well for the region, as uh, we are seeing uh, what he has been doing to the people of Uganda. However, for regional groups, I'm not against countries coming together to work together to sign trade deals. But the people who are affected by the decisions of the leaders have got to be consulted and their views have got to be taken into account. And that is what the people of this country, where I am today in the United Kingdom, said to their leaders, you don't listen to us, you don't consult us, you just go to Brussels, sit uh, with your fellow elite and make decisions that have got far-reaching consequences on our day-to-day -day lives. We have rejected this and this is the message. So it's the message to African politicians that much as we want these uh, unions uh, to be forged, uh, a much closer African Union, a uh, much closer trading relationship with 
African countries, which is a good idea because Africa as it is, uh, which has got a larger population, uh, but with a low uh, income uh, base to spend uh, on commodities. They need to come together and create jobs and create opportunities uh, for a very young uh, population on the continent. But people have got to be consulted, and that is the message. And the people's will has got to be respected. Thank you very much. Um, thank you too, of course, uh, Mariema, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. Well, that will do it for today's uh, social media segment.